more topics in the subject area of quantum physics, the wave mechanics, the quantum mechanics. In this uh, segment, we're investigating the de Broglie wavelength. De Broglie, I made a hypothesis that material objects travel as a wave. They have an associated wavelength. So we're going to calculate a couple of uh, situations here. Let's suppose that we have a baseball, and it's a nice fast baseball. This will come into play later, why I chose the speed, 3,250 miles per hour. But we calculate the de Broglie wavelength by taking Planck's constant and dividing by the momentum of the object. Just the classical physics momentum is all we need here. Uh, so mass times velocity. Planck's constant divided by mass times velocity. So for this baseball, a, uh, I looked up the standard baseball is about 145 grams. And of course we need to convert that to kilograms. So 0 0.145 kilograms. Move three places to uh, create the kilogram number. And we've got all the information we need. Uh, but we do have to change the velocity. So 3,250 miles per hour. And there's a conversion factor. 0 0.447 meters per second is one mile per hour. So round it off. 1453 meters per second. Now we're ready to go. So the wavelength is going to be Planck's constant. You look that number up. 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 in standard metric units. We divide by our 0.145 kilograms and our velocity 1453 meters per second. We don't need the direction just the meters per second number. And you should try this with your own uh, uh, calculator. Pause. Come back to the video and you're done. And I get 3.14 times 10 to the minus 36 meters. A very short wavelength. And this baseball will not exhibit wave effects like interference and diffraction. Uh, the wavelength is much too short. Uh, to get interference and diffraction effects, we need a wavelength you know, comparable to the uh, objects the light is interacting with. This wavelength is very short. There'll be no uh, evident uh, wave effects. Even though it does travel as a wave, this is the wavelength, uh, we won't be able to detect that type of short wavelength effect. So let's change things around a little bit. How is it that we could get a bigger wavelength? Well, you might uh, think about the mass here. And if we go to the mass of the electron, in part B here, calculate the de Broglie wavelength for an electron, same, um, same speed here, 3,250 meters per second. Now the new piece of information is the mass of the electron. I'm going to go ahead and uh, just put things in here. The same constant, Planck's constant. But now instead of the mass of the baseball, I need the mass of the electron. 9.109 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. And we have our same speed up above. So I just wanted to do a, a calculation here to give a, a interesting result for the electron, that speed, and choose, chose the same speed for the baseball. So in these two calculations, just the mass that's different. Uh, I've got the same flux constant, the same speed. But when I do this calculation, since we have a very small mass now, we get a bigger number for the wavelength, 5.01 times 10 to the minus 7 meters, and in nanometers, 501 nanometers, we're in the realm of visible light. And using electrons with this speed will get effects, uh, the same effects as visible light. If we use a double slit, um, the electrons, as they go through, go through as waves and will constructively and destructively interfere will get an interference pattern with the same uh, effect as light of 501 nanometers would have. So there's our de Broglie wavelength, Planck's constant, divided by the mass, divided by the velocity.